The mansion has unexpectedly become the hardest robbery in Jerbic out of nowhere after lacking a robbery update in years. Fighting the CEO is unlike any other robbery, and today I'll be showing you how to beat the robbery even without a jetpack. The reason why I said jetpack is because previously the jetpack allowed you to completely break the robbery. All you had to do was fly on the bookshelves and he couldn't hit you, but this has been patched so we have to go to more traditional ways. One of the most important things to know is what guns to bring. There are three essential guns you should always bring in your loadout. The first being the rifle with the highest DPS of any gun and also has fantastic range. The shotgun is the best weapon at close quarters and can do quick damage. The last is the force field gun which is the best healing source in the entire game. But before any fight, you first have to know how to actually get in. You can't just walk in. You first need an item to get in. Think of it like a key card, like getting into a bank. As you can see, we cannot enter it. And that item is the invite from airdrops. Now that begs the question, what are airdrops? Well, there are crates that spawn randomly in the deserts. There are three different types of airdrops. The first being the wooden crate, that's the easiest. The second is the blue crate, that's the moderate difficulty. And the last being the red with a very intense difficulty. Just to show you how difficult these crates are, these are the record amount of people needed for each crate. Now that we have the invite, we can finally go to the mansion. But there's a big problem, and that's centered around the player count. This robbery was designed for three players, but sometimes it really doesn't add up to three people. It sometimes gets packed and becomes a race to see who gets in first. And trust me, this is not fun at all. So if you have a coordinated group, always grind in a private server. You don't have to risk somebody getting in. It's important to know when the mansion opens. The mansion is not like other robberies. It always opens at 6 p.m. sharp or when the night first starts. And it stays open until the night ends. It means closed in the morning all the way to the afternoon. Now let's get into the actual mechanics of the boss. The first thing you need to know is the most deadly attack to watch out for. He charges his armor and can hold his stance to attack you from anywhere. This attack does more than half your HP and will ragdoll you. His second attack is being a super long range laser that will slowly move towards anybody fighting him. His final move is spawning NPCs that fight for him. Even though he's not physically attacking you, these NPCs can be more dangerous than the boss itself. Now that we know his entire moveset, how do we actually dodge his attacks? Well, there's only one way to dodge his attacks, and that's by using walls. If you see planks on the floor, that means there's a wall there. The wall is meant to protect the CEO from your attacks, but you can use it against him to block his own attacks. I mean, they are undodgeable, so it's only fair. That's only the basics of what you need to know. There's definitely some tips we can use to enhance our gameplay even further. Using our rocket launcher grenades, we can kill the NPCs at the start instantly. This will make the fight much easier, as he always spawns three NPCs at the start. Make sure you're in a group of three, as this robbery is designed for three people. You can solo this, but it's a lot harder. There's no reason to not play with three people. It'll be much easier and it'll be a lot faster too. And you'll have a higher win rate for all the rewards you can get. From a distance, you can solo any airdrop with just a sniper. It's definitely one of the easiest ways to slow in an airdrop. There's also a very useful glitch we can use to get airdrops. You want to crouch by the crate as soon as you start it. And make sure you're holding E the entire time. And as soon as you die, you want to wait a few seconds. And then press choose spawn as the very last second. This will stall your timer by 10 seconds. And this is sometimes enough to get the crate. It didn't work this time, so I'm going to drive back. It should work this time.
And there we go. We don't even need guns to do this. If you are crazy enough to try solo in this, do not do this in a private server. For whatever reason, the NPCs in a private server have much higher HP. The best position to be at is it around his desk. This place has the most walls and is the best place to be around. Make sure you're at this place if you want to solo it, or just be here in general. And you have enough room to fall back with enough walls. So make sure you play around the center. Here are some advanced tips you should know. Remember when I said VIP servers are harder? Well, yeah, maybe it's worth doing it. Because turn rain on will allow the mansion to be open much faster than normal. Just use the command rain on and it will automatically turn night in a private server. I just opened it at 1 p.m. With a good time and you can just jump over the pressure plates. Now let's get into the rewards. Not also do you get 16,000, you can also get a cool harpoon spoiler. You can also get electrostatic rims. And most importantly, the escape bot. This vehicle has a 15% chance of dropping. But there's also one other reward, and the best reward from it, the hyperchrome. You have two times odds of getting the hyperchrome from the mansion than normal. It means pretty broken if you want to get hyperchromes. I've seen people get a level 5 from it. Anyways, that's all you need to know for this robbery. This robbery has the best rewards, but it's also the most time consuming to set up. So what do you think? Is this worth robbing? I think it's very useful. I've seen people get level five hyper crumbs from it. Anyways, thanks for watching and subscribe.